encoding with the Adobe Media Encoder. When you launch the Media Encoder, you see the main screen, which consists of the batch queue, the list of files that will be encoded, some control buttons, add, duplicate, and remove to manage your queue, pause and start queue, which will start the queue and pause the encoding once it's started. You have a progress indicator down here at the bottom, which will have messages during the encoding process. To add videos, you can click the Add button, and then you can select whichever videos you wish to encode. Click Open, and they're added to my list. You can just drag a file from your operating system onto the list, and it'll be added to your batch queue. You can change the file name that will be encoded by just clicking File Name under the Output file, which will bring up the Save As dialog. You can modify its encoding settings by modifying the preset. And we can apply from one of the preset presets, one of the actual saved presets, by just clicking on this down arrow and selecting from the list. And then you'll change the setting to that one. But you can uh, apply custom settings either by clicking on that down arrow and selecting Edit Export Settings or by clicking on the name of the settings itself. And that then brings us to the Export Settings panel. The Export Settings panel is broken into four main areas. We have the Preview window up here on the upper left. We have the Settings Summary up here on the upper right. We have all of the actual encoding settings down here on the lower right. And there on the lower left is the GUI, the graphical interface for inserting cue points into our video. So let's start with the Preview window. We have the ability to preview our source, and as well as the output. And so this would show us, for example, as you can see here, because I've applied a specific preset, that the output is uh, different dimensions than the input. So it's showing me here how the letterbox is going to uh, look in the encoded video. So you can view both source and output. You can scrub the video timeline to see what it looks like over time. You can customize the in and out points just by dragging the in and out handles, thus determining which portion of the, uh, the source video will be encoded into the output video. You can crop the source. So if we move under source, we can click this little crop button, which introduces a crop box. And this allows us to say, for example, this is the only portion of our video that we wish to encode. And you can see that in the output panel. Next, we have the export settings summary. We can easily load uh, saved presets by clicking on the preset name here. We can save whatever preset we're working with by clicking on the save icon, and it allows us to assign a name. We can import an existing preset from a file on our system. The file type is EPR. And we can delete a preset. We can apply some comments for whatever preset we're working with. So for example, this is the preset that we use for client X. And you can also modify the output name just by clicking on it. Uh, and then in the bottom part of the summary panel is the actual summary itself. So I'm going to be, because of the crazy settings I'm working with right now, Encoding 786 by 576, so that's width times height at 25 frames per second, optimized for progressive. It'll have an AAC audio track um, using variable bitrate one pass uh, with a target uh, bitrate of 1.5 megabits with a maximum established bitrate of 2 megabits. So that's the summary of the encoding settings that we uh, will have applied. Now, that leads directly into the encoding options. The Filters tab uh, currently just has a Gaussian Blur option, which you could enable if you wanted to by uh, checking the box. Pretty important tab is Format. So there's two format options. There's FLV and there's F4V. Within FLV, you will have a codec option of uh, Sorensen Spark or VP6, so that is Flash 7 or Flash 8 video. And if we uh, select F4V, then that selection is made for us. We, are encode, we will encode using H.264 video. Now, that's the only option on this tab, but it directly influences what's on the video tab. 
So if we select FLV in the Format tab, in the Video tab, you'll see the topmost option has Spark and VP6. Which codec do you wish to use? If you have Spark selected, you'll see some of these options actually disappear because it's uh, just a less feature-rich codec. If, if we have VP6 selected, which is Flash 8, then you see we have all of the options in this panel enabled. And if we go back to the Format tab and select F4V, which is the Flash 10 format, you'll see the codec option is gone. It's telling me the codec will be the main concept H.264 video. We have the option to resize the video. Uh, again, we have that neat little mouse interaction. Uh, we can select the frame rate, whether we are going to use constant bitrate or variable bitrate encoding, what the target bitrate should be, and what the maximum bitrate should be. Now that only matters, obviously, for variable bitrate, because for constant bitrate, there's just a single bitrate. You have the option, if you check, to uh, set the keyframe frequency. That is, how many frames appear in between keyframes. If you leave it unchecked, the encoder will handle that automatically for you. I just want to jump back to FLV briefly to show you that if you have VP6 selected, you have the option to encode the alpha channel. So that is how encode transparent video. The format, so FLV or F4V, also determines your audio tab content. If the format is FLV, then the audio tab will contain the MP3 settings. And you only have two options, stereo mono and the bitrate. What should the bitrate of this MP3 be? If the format, on the other hand, is F4V, then you see we actually have a couple of uh, uh, options on the codec. They're all AAC, but just a couple of options within them. Again, mono, stereo. We can also choose the frequency, the audio quality, the bitrate. And then there's a tab for others. And this one's actually pretty neat because it comes with this FTP option, so I can check this. And then I can place uh, my, my FTP information in here, and it'll automatically post the encoded video when it's done. Finally, we have the editor for inserting cue points. The way to insert cue points using this editor is to drag the playhead to whichever part of the video you want to insert a cue point for. Then you click this plus button here, which means add cue point. We've added a cue point. I can click its name just once, and I can say custom name. So I've given it a, a custom name. There's the time at which it exists. Now that's not editable, right? Because that we established by dragging the playhead. And then there's cue point type, because there's two types of cue points when working in Flash Video, event and navigation. And you can insert as many as you want, right? So you drag to wherever on the timeline you want more cue points, and you can just keep adding them. Once you have a cue point created, you can click on that cue point and it'll jump to that cue point. Now these cue points are all empty. So if I wanted to add data to these cue points, I would select the specific cue point that I want to work with. And then the data in that cue point is stored down here in the bottom rectangle. To add a property to it, I can click the plus button. So I could name this some name and give it some value. And I could add another one, An another name with another value. And if you screw up and there's one you don't want, you select it and click the minus. It'll, it'll warn you it's, it's uh, not undoable. That's fine. So you can save your cue points out as XML by clicking the Save button and then just saving it as a file on your system. You can import an XML file that defines the cue points, the same file that you would save out of here. So that's everything, right? That's everything that there is to do in this export settings panel. OK. And when your cue is ready, you can click Start Cue. So I can pause this. Uh, and then whenever I'm ready again, I can click Continue.